Hi, everybody. Welcome to Get Real with Andy. Today's topic is the brain in pain. And I know that sounds a lot like the rain in Spain. And uh, if you have if you have some kind of a good rhyme that completes that brain in pain, you know, do let me know. Listen, our prime directive as human beings, besides seeking out peace and joy and happiness, is to not be in pain. And yet, when pain takes place and we're not able to process it, which we seriously aren't when we're children, that pain gets registered in different levels of the brain. There's the vegetative or body level of the brain. That's the, the lower functions, you know, really basic bodily functions. And there's a whole segment of the brain devoted to processing that. Then there's the midbrain or the emotional brain. This is where emotions are generated to be an immediate connectivity to the environment so that we can really survive better. And then there's the high brain, which is the cerebral cortex, our thinking, symbolizing brain. And whenever pain happens and we're unable to process it, that's why we store it, post-traumatic stress disorder is all about. It's pain that got registered, but we weren't able to deal with it because we were too busy surviving the plane crash or whatever it is. That pain, however, doesn't just go away. We put it out of our consciousness and we do whatever we can do to keep it out of consciousness. But there is an other force, an integrative force that wants it in our consciousness so that we can make peace with it, deal with it. And like I said, when we're children, we don't have those resources. A brain in pain looks like anxiety. It looks like phobia. It looks like body dysmorphic disorder. We will warp our thinking and our feeling as a way to keep pain out. It's a very dramatic process that we use to deal with trauma. And I am saying, Trauma can go really deep. For instance, if a mother is drinking alcohol before she knows she's pregnant, or even if she knows she's pregnant, and that affects you know, the fetus, and the fetus will somehow not have enough oxygen because of the alcohol in the system, or the parents aren't getting along before the baby's even born, or even worse, the baby's not even wanted, the pregnancy is not wanted. I mean, I could tell you stories about how that imprint has affected a person's life. And those things are there at a deeper level. And those deeper level brain imprints are kept down by something that has been referred to as limbic gates. These are the gates in the limbic system in the midbrain that keep pain down. Unfortunately, uh, this is just an aside here, but psychedelics, for instance, they open these limbic gates and we're flooded with deeper awareness, deeper cosmic this and that. It is all well and good, but we end up with our gates open. The floodgates are open to things that we were keeping out of our consciousness on purpose so that we don't be overwhelmed and we don't suffer so much. And then we can actually go into psychosis. Psychosis is a very primitive and last-ditch attempt to keep pain away. I worked with a full-blown schizophrenic one time when I was a student in nursing school. We did a psych rotation, and we went to a lockdown hospital. And when I first met this young man, uh, he was tied down. That's why I'm going like this. He was in restraints. And finally, you know, he was calming down a little bit and I would I release him from his restraints, but he wouldn't let me in the room. And so I would be sitting in the hall looking at my notebook or my phone. I guess it was before phones. It was my notebook. And he was in there and he says, I know you're faking. I know you want to come in this room and play with me or something really adorable like that. And slowly. But it was fascinating for me to see how he was a brain in pain. And so as a therapist, I'm called on 
to learn about how we store pain and then to learn how, how to help a person unlock themselves from it, to unlock the pain into awareness. Some people can handle larger doses of it and some people need to do it incrementally. That's why therapy takes time. And the rule of thumb is the younger the person was when the trauma was experienced, the longer the therapy takes to unwind it. Because as this pain from the lower levels of the brain, from the body level of the imprint, leaks through the gates and comes into awareness, we can feel like we're losing our mind. It doesn't make sense. That's why they say anxiety, it isn't about anything. It's just a generalized anxiety response. And then we have drugs for that sort of a thing. But the reality is that these things don't come from nowhere. These things come from imprints. So how to help somebody, how to help myself deal with these? In the beginning, it's just important to recognize this is an imprint. This isn't reality, reality. This is just stored pain that's coming to the surface. And I've noticed these things come to the surface when we're quiet, when I'm quiet, when I'm still, when I'm not busy. That's the big reason that people stay really busy because busyness, the distraction is a way to not have the pain come to the foreground. This is why pain tends to emerge at really weird, quote, weird times. After somebody has been in school for a long time and they finally graduate, that's when they get depressed. Somebody finally gets married. That's when they get depressed. Somebody finally, after wanting to be a mother for so long, being pregnant for nine months, finally has her baby. That's when she has the postpartum depression. It's not logical, but it has a logic of its own. When we finally either achieve something that we're, we've been striving for and there's no more striving, that leaves a space of being. And that's when the body gets the message. The mind-body system gets the message. It's time to integrate things that I'm carrying that I don't want to carry anymore. It's time to get rid of excess baggage. But how do we do that? It comes into awareness for us to make peace with. And if you're like me, you need help dealing with these things because, like I said, it can feel like you're losing your mind. And in essence, you are. So the brain in pain. Ooh, I want to finish that rhyme. Okay, I hope you got a little something out of this at least, that this isn't the time to be hard on yourself. And this brain in pain notion really does explain why psychedelics sometimes have a, like a bad after effect. You know, because they do open the gates and essentially that's a, a good thing, but we close the gates on purpose. We close the gates when we it was beyond our capacity to deal with some kind of pain. Pain comes in three flavors, physical, emotional, and mental. And when we can't handle either or any of those or even all of those, that's when we shut those limbic gates tightly and we want to repress it that's the stuff of nightmares. That's the stuff of post-traumatic stress disorder. That's the stuff of phobias. Phobias are displaced pains, right? You're in an elevator and somehow the claustrophobia of it is reminiscent of something that's triggered in the body. All right. I could clearly go on and on because this is the most fascinating thing for me as a therapist who really wants to help people do more than just cope with pain. You know, this is a time to actually integrate pain because there is life beyond pain. The brain deals with pain, but without pain, the brain is naturally intuitive where the flow between the physical, the emotional, and the mental is fluid, is dynamic, is connected, right? You've met people like that. In their own little way, children are like that. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your interest in this topic. Thank you for sticking in with this video. Okay, love you.